It's Celebrity MasterChef. I'm going to give it my best shot because I really do enjoy winning. These celebrities are all passionate about food. It'd be great to move on to the next round. We're looking for that exceptional cooking style. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. I would love to win MasterChef. It would mean the world to me. These six celebrities believe they've got what it takes to become MasterChef. Now their cooking skills will undergo three rigorous tests. First, they have to invent two dishes from scratch out of a mystery box of ingredients. You're a fairly competitive person, aren't you? You might be all right, I reckon. Then they have to survive the pressure of cooking for paying customers. Bin it, let's go again. Bin your eggs, let's go again. Come on. Oh. The wrong sauce! Ah. And they have to wow the judges with their best two-course meal. Very, 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 very good. But only two of them will go through to the quarter-final. Maybe they've got an inkling that they could be a decent cook. Maybe they honestly believe they are. We're about to find out. It's day one. The first three celebrities arrive to compete for the title of Celebrity MasterChef. Wendy Peters is the acclaimed actress best known for her role as Scylla in Coronation Street. The pressure's really on, and can, they, can you do fish fingers on MasterChef? Spoonie is the Radio 5 Live DJ who captivated dance floors worldwide as part of the Dream Team. Definitely nervous about my cooking ability, or inability. Noel Whelan is the ex-Premier League footballer who played for Leeds United and Millwall. I've got my own methods and ways of doing it, so when I'm in there, everyone move out of the way. You have in front of you a set of ingredients. Simple task, two great plates of food, 50 minutes, your time starts now. The celebrities need to create two exceptional dishes from today's ingredients, which include trout, potatoes, fennel, figs, parma ham, goat's cheese, and maple syrup. Judging the celebrities on their dishes are top chef and restaurateur John Tarode. It's Master Chef. It's a competition. We're looking for the best of the best. Somebody who really, really impresses us. And food writer and ingredients expert, Greg Wallace. We are looking for someone who really does have the palate, the fingers, the taste buds, the touch. Wendy's my tip. Wendy's my tip because Wendy's a mum. And if you're a mum, you've cooked. There's some people you look at and they just look like they belong in a kitchen. I'm quite an organised person normally in life, um, but when somebody says you've got 50 minutes, go anything could happen. Which way is your mind going? I'm sort of not exactly quite decided what I'm doing yet. I'm just sort of go seeing as I go. You're pretty good with a knife. You yeah. obviously do quite a bit of cooking. But mm. right now, you're a bit confused. Why is that? I think it's just it's something that I'm not used to. I'm used to being at home and deciding, you know, in a, well in advance what I'm going to make. How far do you think you can go through this competition, Winnie? No idea. Absolutely no idea. And the panic starts setting in a bit now. You've had 25 minutes, you are halfway. Spoonie has travelled the world as a DJ. He's been exposed to good food, that's for sure. But can he cook? Spoonie, weighing out flour, seasoning your fish, you're yeah. a bit of a cook, are you? I'm a brand new cook. I've, I've actually been cooking 10 days. Whoa. 10 days. But I'm trying to call on the experiences of watching my mum. So is this all about showing your mum that you can cook, Spoonie? It's about showing myself that I can cook as well. Um, I'm very left-handed, so my mum always said in the kitchen I looked very cack-handed. She wouldn't let me near sharp knives and hot boiling water. So it took me a long time to get into a kitchen unsupervised. Good man. I really want to win it. I'd love to win it. 
to put the trophy at my mum's house, but I don't want any of my friends saying that I embarrassed them. So. You've got 10 minutes left. Sportsmen don't do things by halves. Strict about their diet, extremely competitive. Every single sportsman I've seen on MasterChef does very, very well. There's more to me than just football. You have other hobbies and, uh, and loves in life, and cooking's one of mine. No, I've got to say, I've never seen anybody cut so many wedges in all their life. What's going on? Um, well, yeah, I went a bit mental on the tomatoes, but I'm going for a uh, warm goat's cheese salad, and then the fish, and a bit of salad. You like salad? Um, well, I've always been on the healthy side of things, obviously, with the football. But the problem is, both dishes are going to look quite similar. Yeah, I might change that. <laughs> all right. On those plates, please. You better be quick. Time is up. Despite her panic, family cook Wendy has invented a dish of goat's cheese and fig wrapped in parma ham with salsa. I think you've done quite well. All right, so you can stop breathing out now. All right. First of all, tomato, onion and oil is good, but then salty ham and salty goat's cheese is a little too much. Seriously powerful flavours in there, which in a way gives me great hope. Because if you appreciate flavours as powerful as that, you're probably a very good cook. Will her second dish of trout in a fennel and cream sauce with Hasselback potatoes win John and Greg over? The dill and the fennel giving a little bit of aniseed in different amounts is lovely going through that creamy sauce. Every component part is cooked very well. Everything delivers in flavour. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Can you get better? I don't know. I think it's just a confidence thing. I need to have more confidence in myself. Does Noel's healthy option of warm goat's cheese salad with parma ham demonstrate enough skill? I think it shows about as much cookery skill as putting the plate down did. Mm -hmm. But I am quite impressed by your flavour and texture combinations. Magically, that um, ham, tomato and cheese I picked up, tastes of ham, tomato and cheese. Incredible. If you're going to go any further in this competition, Noel, you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Noel almost faced disaster by preparing two salads. Has he pulled it back from the brink with a dish of trout and fennel with new potatoes? We originally were going to have a second salad. Yeah. And you had, I think what drunks refer to, as a moment of clarity and thought, oh, dear. Yeah, I had to change that one. I first off got lemon juice, and I thought, oh, that's fierce, and it went very, very quickly, and the trout started to come in quite strong. That is a wonderful, wonderful match. The fennel's tasty, it's got some crunch to it. The potato washes out your mouth. It's all right. I reckon you've just got to concentrate a bit, Noel. Yeah. Are we one nil down at half-time? We're one nil down, the game's not over. Novice cook Spoonie hopes to impress the judges with a dish of pan-fried trout and mashed potatoes. It has been cooked very well, but without some sort of sauce to hold that together, it's slightly bland. If you've only been cooking for a week, honestly, you might be all right, I reckon. Can his pancake with lemon, maple syrup and cinnamon prove his potential to the judges? Should I throw something in? Go on. It's the first time I've ever made one. What, you've never had a recipe before? I've never made a pancake before. Looked at a recipe and memorised the amounts, what I had to put in there, and then mixed it up and made it. That's incredible. Your flavour of the syrup, almost honey-like, thick treacle, going into sharp lemon and finishing 
on very, very soft and spicy cinnamon is inspired. Spoonie, you could be a fast one. Interesting. <laughs> Some good food, some interesting food. You're going to go now and we're going to chat about you. Off you go. Ooh. That was quite stressful. That was a little bit stressful, okay. wasn't it? It's interesting at this round because you always find that gem and you always find the person with promise. Wendy's the one for me. I think the lady cooks quite a bit. I absolutely loved that trout with the cream, with the fennel. I was absolutely thrilled, and it didn't look like I was, I think, but I was quite... I'm still very nervous about it. I think it's... I think I just need to have a bit more confidence in myself with it. Yeah, Wendy, I don't know if she actually knows how good a cook she really is. Noel's first dish, that salad, was something that was done in the first class of home economics in Grade 3. The salad I wasn't happy with. The goat's cheese, when it came out, crumbled into nothing. There's only one that came out the way it should have done, so it's kind of patching up. <laughs> No, I've got to say, John, he was heading for a disaster as he was just about to make a second salad. He saw the look on our face and binned it. And actually, what he came up with, with the fish and the fennel, wasn't bad. If he can actually cook, Noel's going to prove it to me. If somebody had told me we were going to have a contestant on that had only been cooking for a week, I'd say, let's not bother having him. But I've got to say, what he's doing is very impressive. The guy obviously has skill because that pancake is not an easy thing to do. Didn't stick to the pan, perfectly coloured, all folded, lots of sauce. I think Spoonie is a quite a natural. For the guys to say, it's as perfect a pancake as you're likely to make, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I think we have two celebrities that want to be great cooks, and I think we may have a great cook already. For tonight, the pressure's off, but tomorrow they'll face their most demanding test yet. It's day two, and Noel, Wendy and Spoonie are about to work a very busy lunchtime service in a professional kitchen. Set in bustling Covent Garden and specialising in mussels and frite, Belgo is one of London's busiest restaurants, serving over 400 customers a day. Executive chef Muir Pickin runs a very tight ship and expects the celebrities to fall into line. Hi, guys. Thank you. Welcome to Belgo. Today, we've got some very high standards. Please listen, think about what you're doing, and let's execute these dishes professionally. Each will be responsible for one dish from the menu. Noel is in charge of moule portugaise, a mussel dish with chorizo and paprika. I've got to say I'm a little bit intimidated by it all. It's, it's quite scary. But even before service begins, there's a shock in store. <laughs> oh, you... We have a bleeder. <laughs> Just wash that sanitizer yeah. out and we'll give you a plaster. <laughs> you crack on. There's no time. I mean, we've yeah, got to get ready no, for lunch. Gonna... Customers arrive and the lunch service begins. Wendy's nerves will be tested with a tricky dish of roast duck breast in plum beer jus and spring onion mash. See, people are coming in now, I'm like, oh, my God. We're fine. Let's hope nobody fancies duck. One duck breast, that's to follow. Get that duck breast in. Yes, yes! Duck breast in. Don't panic. Oh, so it gets scary. Despite her lack of confidence, she produces a perfect plate of food. That's cooked. Pretty pink, pretty perfect. Thanks very much. Thanks. Great, well done. And you order had it, Bubble? Yes, chef! Novice cook Spoonie is in at the deep end with a popular starter of smoked haddock fish cake on a bed of spinach with a poached egg and chive hollandaise. I'm excited. Can't really go wrong. He's got a copy, you know? And I was used to copying at school. With two haddock fish cakes on order, Spoonie is staying cool. It's easy. There's a, there's a million and one harder jobs out there anyway. The biggest sweat on here. On the other side of the kitchen, a wounded Noel is so keen to impress, he's trying to get the mussels out before they're cooked. I think they're ready now. Stick that lid on then, it's not going to cook. They're done. I think they're ready now. Bit more. Just lifting the lid, letting the steam out, so it takes 
double the time. It's halfway through service and orders are stacking up. Send you two and one. Let's get three out now. And Spoonie's inexperience is starting to show. That is maybe on the limit. That's, That's your burnt good. spinach. Bin it. Let's go again. Bin your eggs. Let's go again. Come on. Quickly. I think he underestimated this dish a little bit because it's absolutely killed you. Two duck and one Portuguese. Yes? Yes, And orders are still coming in thick and fast for Wendy. Wendy, that looks absolutely fantastic. Nice slice. Look at that plum. Absolutely amazing. Well done. Thank you. Wendy's doing great. Um, she's quite a few. She's probably been the busiest out the whole lot, and she's helping with some of my a la carte dishes as well. After a difficult start, Noel finally gets a grip on his nerves. Ready now, chef. No, well done on that Portuguese. It's lovely again, yeah? That, that was fantastic. Well done on lovely. that one. You Thank got you, one chef. more on. Nice Thank keep you. it coming. But the poached eggs are still proving harder than Spoonie thought. Hard poach, take them back. Let's do them again. Both of them, yeah? Yeah. Here's a baptism of fire because I never made a poached egg before and suddenly I'm making it for somebody's lunch. You one more. Under the clock. Good, it's cool. So now I think I'm prepared for everything. Two long hours later, a very hectic service is finally over. Mio, thank you very much indeed. Very, very busy restaurant, and the pressure was on. And what about Noel? How did he cope with the pressure? His nerves were really showing at the beginning, but he got there and he, he, he's a plodder and he's stuck in there. No, it could be the dark horse, actually. He could gain a little bit of confidence and come through. How does Spoonie get on? Walk in, cool as a cucumber. What happens to cucumbers in a hot kitchen? He wilted. But, hey, he was keen, he was keen to learn, he was keen to do it, but eventually, right at the end, he managed to kind of clock it. How about Wendy? I thought she was going to start crying before service started. One or two under the belt, started to pull away from the rest. No problem at all. Really? Yeah, easy. Who's good enough to work in your kitchen? Wendy. Once she got confidence, she was head and shoulders above everybody else. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Cory actress Wendy impressed with her cooking ability. And she excelled in the restaurant. Yes, chef. But has she got the confidence to become a quarter finalist? Ex footballer Noel's healthy dishes missed the mark, but he upped his game in the professional kitchen. Ready now, chef. This is his last chance to prove that he can be a winner. Novice cook Spoonie amazed the judges with his potential. But the DJ struggled under pressure. Spin your eggs, let's go again. Now he needs to show he has enough skill to go through to the next round. You need to focus because we are heading towards a quarterfinal and we can only take one of you with us. Your two courses, your own two plates of food, one hour, let's cook. cook Wendy is adding an unusual twist to a traditional bread and butter pudding. Whilst you're making your bread pudding, which I assume you're doing, you're using orange, marmalade, yeah. uh, orange liqueur in your sultanas. Something I like, but everybody's tastes are different, aren't they? Why are you so nervy? It's not knowing what you're doing. It's that actor's nightmare of you wake up in the middle of the night and you're on stage in the wrong show and you don't know the lines. This self-doubt of yours, is that really the only barrier? I think it might be, yeah. I just think it's a, it's a panic thing. We think you're okay. Just have a piece of halibut with mashed potatoes, a tomato and pepper sauce with wilted spinach. It's not easy stuff. All Wendy's got to do is hold her nerve.
No, you look as trained as if you've just played two cup finals. <laughs> what are you cooking for us, Noel? Um, I am doing, uh, for starters, I'm doing a broccoli and Stilton soup. Um, and for my main course, I'm doing a salsa uh, with mint potatoes and a butterfish. Would you be happy now to go out at this stage of the tournament? Uh, no, I don't think I would. So, fingers crossed that, you know, this is going to go my way and, you know, I can progress on. Butterfish, piece of reef fish, lovely fish, serving the salsa. Ah, is it good enough? No, it's going to have to have a super round right now to pick up the pace. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 20 minutes left. What are your dishes, Booney? More importantly, yeah. will Mum be proud of them? Um, yeah, just seeing me in the kitchen, Mum's going to be proud of <laughs> them. I'm doing a uh, pan-fried sea bass with jasmine rice, like a honey sauce that goes over the green beans. And for dessert, I'm going to have a chocolate melt in the middle of sponge. That's a fondant by any other name, and we've had more contestants go out of this competition with failed fondants than anything else. What about the competition, Spoonie? How far are you going to go? Um, I want to go all the way. Hopefully, you know, the judges see my potential to learn quick and knock something up. Spoonie, sea bass, jasmine rice, beans and honey. Beans and honey? Honey and beans? I'm so scared for Spoonie because he's doing a chocolate fondant. I mean, that is the dessert of death on Master Chef, and he's a novice cook. You've got five minutes left, guys. Is up. Wendy's counting on her halibut on a bed of mash and wilted spinach with salsa, followed by marmalade bread and butter pudding with oranges. You have very well made, creamy, well seasoned mashed potato, lovely mashed potato. Then in comes that fish. I think that is a very good flavour and texture combination. And I'm very, very happy with that. Lovely, sweet, but yet acidic sauce with those tomatoes, the peppers, good sharpness, well seasoned, mash. I think your food is, is pretty good, Wendy. I think it's executed very, very well. You, you have achieved what you set out to do. But to bring citrus into it, is too sharp. Okay. The idea of, of milk, dairy produce, and citrus doesn't work. They curdle each other. And that's what happens to your, your palate. Again, though, your conception, your cooking, your method, your organisation is really good. It's really, really good. Noel is trying to prove his skill by cooking broccoli and Stilton soup, followed by butterfish with new potatoes, salsa, and a salad. Lovely, thick texture. Blue cheese, green iron of the broccoli. It feels like you're doing your good as you're eating it. That, sir, is a cracking bowl of soup. Texture's right, flavour's right, good bowl of soup. And we'll bring in this fish. It's citrusy, you get the fish through. It's not wet enough. This is a work in progress. Okay. This is not yet finished. Yeah. The fish is lovely. The fish is really, really tasty. And the salsa itself could be really, really good with that fish. But they're all a bit too separate. Yeah. Is that enough to get you through? I'll have my fingers crossed. Hopefully it is. Spoonie is serving pan-fried sea bass on green beans in honey and jasmine rice followed by a chocolate fondant. Your fish is really tasty, really tasty. Flavour-wise, 
The jasmine rice and the fish actually work quite nice together. Once the honey and the sticky, sticky rice is gone, that fish is beautiful, crunch of bean, natural juice, that I like. We know you're a novice cook. I think you've got some great, great touches. What happened? Um, well, I basically took my pudding out of the oven a little bit too early. I'm more upset than you are. Cocoa rich chocolate. The balance of sweetness is absolutely right. That was almost an award winning pudding. The only problem you've got with that dessert is it's not cooked long enough. Rich, dark chocolate, the recipe's absolutely right. It's really sticky, it's not oversweet, it's really tasty. You should be very proud of yourself. And I mean it. We only have one quarter final place. You are in for a nervous wait. Thank you very much. Off you go. Are you ready for that soup? <laughs> Master Chef, be it celebrity or normal, the fact is we need a great cook. Somebody who has an idea of what good food is right now, but somebody who can also learn very quickly and get better as they go on the journey. Noel is coming on leaps and bounds. I absolutely love that soup. But he is inexperienced. You can see that in the look of his main course. Let's be fair. This is MasterChef. This is Celebrity MasterChef, and it has to be better than that. I'm very happy to get one spot on. Disappointed my other one wasn't. Um, but hey, that's cooking. OK, so Noel's out. Wendy, I think the girl's got talent. That fish was great. But you didn't like her dessert, and nor did I. I'm sort of relieved to be out. It's a bit like being interrogated. It's, I find I find them a little bit scary. <laughs> the thing is, though, with Wendy, is there are lovely little touches. Her presentation's fantastic. She's extremely well organised in the kitchen, and actually, she achieves exactly what she wanted to achieve. My heart really went out to Spoonie with that pudding, because that was a really brave thing to do. Ninety-five percent of that dish was spot on, but the important five percent wasn't. And uh, you know, there we go. He's got a good touch, Spoonie. And that fish was cooked very, very well indeed. In a competition like this, you've got to learn at a pace, but you've got to have some natural skill. And for a novice, Spoonie's got natural skill. The fact is, we only have one quarterfinal place. So who's going to be? The novice or the experienced cook? Our winner, our quarter finalist, is Wendy. I'm disappointed because I'm quite competitive and I would have wanted to go through, but I've learned to do something that a week ago I couldn't do. Um, so I'm not really a loser. Thank you. You learn things every day, and this is an experience I've definitely learned from. And can I take away the positives? <laughs> I'm a bit shell-shocked, but I'm really, really happy. And, and, you know, obviously I'll take on board what they've said about flavours and stuff and hopefully come back and um, be a bit more confident. Wendy will be back for the quarter-final to battle against three other celebrity cooks. But who else will be joining her? It's day three, and another three celebrities arrive who believe they're deserving of the title of Celebrity MasterChef. Deborah Stevenson is the well-known actress who has starred in Bad Girls and Coronation Street. I'm not scared of John and Greg. I've got a four-year-old boy, and he's the toughest critic around. Josie Darby is the much-loved TV presenter whose varied career includes children's, holiday and music programmes. This is the first time that I'll find out if I'm any good at cooking. I think I am, but I'm going to find out for sure now. Andrew Castle is the former British tennis champion and presenter of GMTV. If I'm hungry, I'm motivated to make food. And I don't go hungry very often. They also face three rigorous tests. 
inventing two dishes from mystery ingredients. There have been worse dishes than this on Celebrity MasterChef. Right now, I can't remember one. Surviving a lunch service in a professional kitchen. Oh, the wrong sauce! Ah. And perfecting their own two-course menu. Very, 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 very good. But only one of them will join Wendy in the quarter-final. All we want from you today are two plates of food. You've got 50 minutes to do it in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The celebrities need to create two exceptional dishes from any of today's ingredients, which include pork fillet, pancetta, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, red onion, cheddar, whole grain mustard, apples, eggs, and bread. Today is about them showing us how good they really are. Maybe they've got an inkling that they could be a decent cook. Maybe they honestly believe they are. We're about to find out. Actress Deborah may be used to the pressure of working on a soap opera, but the MasterChef kitchen is an altogether different story. Uh, it's fair to say, you look slightly concerned. I am actually. I feel a bit like I'm floundering. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. I'm trying to think what you know what goes together, and so I don't make complete hash of it. You know. You must believe that you have something of a cook inside you. Well, I do manage to put meals on the table every night for the family. This is definitely a um, lack of organisation. If I feel under pressure, it might end up being a complete disaster. You've had 20 minutes. TV presenter Josie is a new cook whose passion for food was recently awakened after a meal out. I was actually quite scared of the kitchen until about seven months ago. I tried something at a restaurant and I was determined to make it. And uh, I did. And that got me so excited about cooking. I've started it. I absolutely adore it. I'm scared that I don't have the experience or knowledge required to get through this. So I'm very much in the experimental stage. I am by no means the finished product. Breakfast TV presenter Andrew's hectic schedule means he doesn't have much time to cook. You're looking extremely nervous. This is nerve-wracking. This is definitely out of comfort zone. I actually love food and preparing it if I have time and give it proper energy. Well, what are your two dishes, first of all? I don't know what they are. It's just going to be my sort of food. It's just going to be very functional, um, involving a frying pan, so quite a hearty one. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's good food, if that's what you enjoy to eat, eating. In my job at the moment, the big problem is timing. It's 4 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning and go. And if you give me any more than 10 minutes to cook anything, that would be more than I would normally take. One minute. Put it on the plate. That's it, guys. Your time is up. Despite her panic, Deborah has managed to make tomato bruschetta. Crispy around the edges, soggy in the middle. It's tomato bruschetta. It doesn't demonstrate a huge amount of cookery skill, but it does demonstrate you understand ingredients working together. Deborah, it's fine. It is what it should be. Will her stewed apples in custard make more of an impression? Um, now, Deborah, your custard is curdled. It's about as wrong as a wrong thing on wrong day on wrong island. If you stop the panic, I reckon we would have had a really nice custard.
There have been worse dishes than this on Celebrity MasterChef. Right now, I can't remember one. But I'm sure there have. New cook Josie has made bruschetta with a twist, with tomato, onion, cheddar and pancetta on top. It does look to the untrained eye like someone who stuck it all together and kept their fingers crossed. Oh, my God, this is the worst moment of my life. <laughs> I've got a pretty seasoned palate, but there is so much going on there that I'm unable to fathom out exactly what is on there. But you've got the basics. You don't have to keep on adding. I'm sort of slightly confused because there actually is no defined flavour and you're putting too much on. Just chill. OK. Enjoy it. I've tried to. Has she overdone it again with her pork fillet with sweet potato mash and cream sauce? That tastes a darn sight better than it looks. The sweet potato with the mustard in is a really, really nice idea. Uh, right. The combination of a cream sauce with onions and pork is right. The idea of pork and apples, right. But what we've got is different dishes on a plate trying to come together and fighting with each other. Breakfast TV presenter Andrew has kept it quick and simple with a traditional fry-up. It's absolutely fine. At least you actually thought about what you're going to do and it's food that you want to eat. The problem with it is, is that you've decided to make a pattern out of it. And you see this all the time, an inexperienced cook starts to worry about the aesthetic before anything else. Classic, classic British breakfast. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just you wanted to make a kid's pattern out of it. Will his pork with sweet potato slices be as successful? Flavourings, OK. Rosemary, pork, garlic. Your pork is slightly overcooked. Yeah, it tastes all right. Mm. Rosemary, garlic against that pork with the comfort of the sweet potato underneath it is the right flavour combination. Mm. We're now going to have a chat about you. We're going to let you go off. Thanks very much. I was so confident and then I just panicked. Yours looks great, Andrew. Yours looks the best. Oh, my ladies. <laughs> there are rays of light shining through the dark cloud of the MasterChef kitchen today. I believe Deborah is a cook. She's had a disaster. I believe she's a cook because she feeds her family regularly. But she did tomatoes on toast and some apples in curdled custard. This organisation is her issue. I think she just cannot get it together. OK, I'll trust you on this one. I do cook all the time, and I don't carry on like that at home, so hopefully if I can just settle down, I can become the cook that I am. I think there's, there's, a, there's a bit of talent there in Josie. Josie is a young amateur cook. She's not that experienced. She does know what goes together. The problem is she's trying to put too much on a plate. I mean, I've, I've got a good palate. That bruschetta, I couldn't even work out what was on there. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. And I've trained with international search and rescue operatives and passed, and that was harder. I reckon the professional kitchen will do Josie the world of good because she will see that great food doesn't have to be that complicated. Andrew may not cook very much, but he understands decent food. He knows what flavours go together. I don't mind at all about the egg and bacon and the bread and the tomatoes. That's absolutely right. But it was just this Ferris wheel of food on a plate. It was bizarre. They're quite traditional. I think most people who are good at what they do like to keep things, things simple. And a fry-up is, is simple. So, you know, perhaps that's the reason that they, they went for it. There is hope in there. There is promise. This round, truly, it's all to play for. That's great. For tonight, the pressure's off. But tomorrow they'll face their most demanding test yet. It's early morning and Josie, Andrew and Deborah are about to work a busy lunchtime service 
in a professional kitchen. Today, they're at the National Dining Rooms within the National Gallery in London's Trafalgar Square. The restaurant serves classic British cuisine under the direction of head chef Sean Gilmore. What I'll be looking from all of you is that you listen to what I'm telling you, work quickly, work cleanly and efficiently. Do you swear? Not at all. At 12.30, lunchtime service begins. Can you order? Two set tart, straight up together, please. Yes, chef. Andrew is in charge of a set mushroom tart with walnut mousse and celeriac salad. I need those two set tart, please. Ready, chef. What, where do I put them, chef? But he's forgotten about attention to detail. Andrew, there needs to be more crest salad. It can't be over the edge of the plate. I haven't got enough time to keep redoing it. Can you order one pork, please? OK, I need a pan. Yes, you do. Deborah is cooking glazed roast pork with celeriac puree and gravy. Ow! But the pressure of cooking for paying customers is already getting to her. I've got a problem. What's your problem? This is falling to pieces. What? Okay. No, we get another one in straight yeah. away. Too much sauce in here as well. I think it's ready. I think it's ready. Yeah, right. Nice no, sauce. Thank you. Nice sauce. Uh, we do it. Get some fresh sauce in there. New order, straight up bass, venison, new potato. Yes, chef. Josie is responsible for the sea bass with mushrooms, butternut squash and spinach. How long the bass? Uh, the first one, two minutes. Two bass on their own, one with the pork, yeah? Three bass, mind your back. Josie. Yes, chef. Very nice. Thank you, chef. Woo! <laughs> I listen for sea bass, I do it, it goes. Everything else, none of my business. It's halfway through service and orders for Andrew's dish are stacking up. You got two more set tart on. They've been on order for four minutes already. Yes, chef. They are complaining in the restaurant, Andrew. I need those set tart now, please. You got 15 seconds left here. It was a minute 30, four minutes ago. I'm counting. Thank you. And he's allowed to moan at me. He just wanted me to uh, speed up a little bit, you know. But I mean, you want to get it right. But now the girls are under pressure. Josie, Deborah, I need the bass and the pork at the same time. Yeah. Which one is it? This one? No. no. This one? Yeah. That's the first one. Two bass, good to go. Josie, very good, but it's no good to me if the pork isn't ready. You need 60 seconds. It'll take me 60 seconds to plate up, so I plate up no, now, yeah? Okay. No. okay, right now. Get me the pork, please. Yes, Chef, ready. Yossi, I need it now, please. Straight yes, up. Chef. Josie's sea bass is ready to go, but Deborah fails to get hers done. Sean has to ask one of his chefs to finish the pork. It's really, really hectic and the pressure is on and sometimes I'm feeling a little bit fraught. And I feel that the hardest thing about it is that I'm just a bit forgetful. How many bass am I waiting for? Nine chefs! While Deborah falls apart, Josie thrives and turns out a staggering 35 plates of perfect sea bass. It's hot, it's tough, it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's so many conflicting, you know, feelings going on. After two long hours, service is finally over. How did Andrew manage? His timing was a little bit off. Two minutes wait turned into four minutes. Some of the stuff was, wasn't exact enough, it wasn't... Uh, uh, a bit slapdash on some of the items. Tell me about Deborah. She was very overruled by the whole um, prospect of being in the kitchen. Out of her depth, very, very much so, I think. How did Josie get on? She grabbed the, the fish section with both hands and, and ran with it. She didn't burn any fish. They all came up crispy. Josie had the hardest job because she had the most orders and she coped with it. She cooked about 35. Wow! wow. I know. Really? Wow. <laughs> That's serious. Well, I was most impressed with her, yeah. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. 
Yesterday, ex Cory actress Deborah's panic produced two disastrous dishes, and she fell apart in the pro kitchen. This is her last chance to prove she's got what it takes. Breakfast presenter Andrew demonstrated he can cook hearty food, but he struggled under pressure. Can he now produce dishes worthy of a quarter finalist? TV presenter Josie's dishes were overcomplicated, but she triumphed in the restaurant. Can she reign in her style and walk away the winner? There is a quarter final place up for grabs. Your own two courses, you've got one hour to do it in. Let's cook. <laughs> What are you cooking for us? I'm cooking um, monkfish in prosciutto and chocolate fondant. Oh dear. Why? You have no idea how many failed fondants we've had on this programme. OK, well, hopefully you'll have one that isn't failed today. What do you think is the most critical part for you today? Obviously, organisation is critical today. Just worried about doing everything in the amount of time given. It's bizarre, because Deborah really panics in the kitchen. How she pulls this off, that girl has got a winning menu, absolutely. You are halfway there, you've got 30 minutes left. Calm, Andrew? Completely in control, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> not up here, no, I'm not. What dishes have we got? I'm doing asparagus spears uh, with um, parmigiana. And you can pass that around at the beginning of an evening. The other course is um, salmon with uh, a sauce on top of stem ginger in a, in a sugar syrup. Would you like to go through? I wouldn't have been here in the first place if I didn't want to progress. I would now <laughs> love to go through. He's got about 250 grams of cheese for every single spear of asparagus. That is far too much. The idea of the salmon with the ginger, I don't know what to expect. Focus. You have 20 minutes left. You had an interesting time in the kitchen today. Tell us about it. I just thought it was a buzz. I thought it was brilliant. And it was nice because the food was going out, it was looking right, you know, kept focused, kept on top of it. You did 35 dishes of sea bass. We reckon that might be a MasterChef record. Wow! <laughs> I knew it was a lot, but I was in the groove, you know. I was sad when it came to an end, actually. And is a fish pie and a cheesecake worthy of a MasterChef quarterfinal? I hope so. Would you like it to be? I to me, are you kidding me? I shouldn't say it in earshot, but oh my god, would I? We have got a fish pie followed by a baked cheesecake. This is comfort food, it's food you can eat with a spoon. Give me the spoon, rock on. You have two minutes left. Tools down, please. Deborah's gone all out with monkfish in prosciutto and steamed Romanesco, followed by chocolate fondant with chocolate sauce and milk ice cream. It's sweet, it's fruity sweet, going slightly acidic, you get into the meatiness of the fish. All in all, that's not a bad dish at all. Really well cooked, really well thought out. I'm really pleased with the flavours because they're strong, they're harsh, they're intense. Finish with the main. Bring in the pud. Uh, we just got to hope it's running inside, haven't we? We do. It's perfectly runny inside, look. Wow. The whole thing is uh, yummy. Absolutely yummy. That's very good indeed. Thank you. Mm. 
very, 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 very good. I think it's really important to emphasise how difficult this really is. The idea of a chocolate fondant, which has still got an oozy centre in it, the timing is absolutely important. The mixture has to be absolutely right. I was so thrilled with the feedback. I um, feel so flattered. I feel really genuinely so flattered. New cook Josie wants to prove her food can be both understated and delicious with fish pie in white wine sauce, followed by baked lemon and ginger cheesecake. The fish itself is cooked absolutely beautifully. There's plenty of sauce to the potato. I reckon as the fish pie goes, you haven't done bad at all. The textures of soft fish and soft mashed potato and peas is wonderful. Technically, I think it's very good. Cheesecake. Uh, it is a shame that your cheesecake flopped. The fact is that you probably just didn't leave it in the oven quite long enough. Very, very intense flavour in that um, the cheesecake mix. It isn't cooked enough, and that's why it's setting itself down, because the texture is not quite right. Really, really nice flavour sensations. The awful thing for you is it's not set. It needed longer, which is a shame. I'm gutted, I'm gutted. Just too ambitious. Don't know my own limits. Breakfast presenter Andrews made asparagus and parmesan wrapped in parma ham, followed by salmon with new potatoes and a honey sultana and stem ginger topping. I believe there is too much parmigiano or reggiano on there for every spear of asparagus. If you go to Italy, you, you'll never see it. You'll never see it served in a block like, like we eat cheddar. I think your combinations work. But this doesn't show a great deal of cookery skill. I think there was too much cheese in there. It could probably be about half the amount. Bring in the fish. It feels really odd to me that the, the honey flavour and stem ginger for me just does not go at all with that Atlantic and freshwater fish. The idea of taking this beautiful, tender, full flavoured piece of salmon, which has so much of its own flavour in it already, and chucking all these flavours on top is just not right. You've got a beautiful piece of salmon and uh, I've put too much stuff on it, basically. Uh, it is a competition and we only have one quarter-final place. You have to go now and we have to talk about you a lot and make a decision. Thank you very much. We've had some great food in here today. We've had some big mistakes as well. I want to start with Andrew. I've got no idea what was on that salmon. I think he just made it up as he went along. He's asparagus and cheese wrapped up in ham. It's not the stuff of a MasterChef quarter finalist. He doesn't have the skill of the other two girls just yet. Pretty much whatever I do, I try my best at it. And that's what I've done in the last couple of days. We agree, Andrew goes home, it's between Josie and Deborah. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Deborah, she had a lot to prove, but Deborah's two courses were the two best plates of food in the room today. If I could win this heat, that would mean a lot to me. That would, that would really, really make my day. We have both seen talent in Josie. We've seen the enthusiasm. It really means a lot to me because I just love it. I just love cooking. I like the idea of the fish pie. I like the idea of the cheesecake. The cheesecake wasn't cooked. Someone hasn't performed as well as Josie in a professional kitchen for a long, long time, I would say, if ever. And I don't think Deborah copes with pressure at all. In the opening round, that lady was an absolute disaster. You can't deny, though, the skill of Deborah. Two very good, complete plates of food, done really, really well. Greg, a quarter-final, please. John, a nice quarter-final. I'm fully aware of the importance of this decision. Fully aware. Who's it going to be?
our quarterfinalist. It's Josie. Oh <laughs> 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 I'm so chuffed. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I think after yesterday, I just wanted to redeem myself, and that is good enough for me. Wow, wow, I, oh. I like food, I like the texture of food, and I love eating lots of it. So this has been a privilege to be a part of. I'm just delighted. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I can cook. I can do it, I can do it. this home actually because I'll just have this tomorrow I'm quite happy to I don't want to sort of waste it Josie will be back for the quarter final when she'll battle against Wendy Mark and Liz that isn't a Bernays sauce anymore it's a jar of butter about as bad as it gets that is one seriously sexy pudding <laughs>